Okay, let's talk about buoyancy. Buoyancy. Buoyant forces. Buoyancy. Let me spell that out for you because I am a horrible speller and when I learned about buoyancy, I couldn't spell it to save my life. Buoyancy. B U O Y A N C Y. Buoyancy. What is buoyancy? What is that force that makes huge cruise lines and big navy ships and, and even sailboats float on water and what is those forces that um, keep a rock or make a rock sink um, it's funny because if you throw a tiny little rock into the water it may sink if you throw a huge well-designed cruise liner into the ocean, it will float. Huh, well, what makes it float? Well, let's think about a body of mass. Uh, let me draw this in black. Let's think of a body of mass. And this body of mass has a certain weight. And, okay, and I shouldn't have drawn it in a circle, but that's okay. Just pretend this body of mass is not perfectly a sphere, but it's irregularly shaped along its entire surface. So maybe it's a it's a clump of rock. So think of it that way. And let's say, remember this has the weight of this body of mass in it. It has maybe a cable holding it up. We can call that tension T. And this body of mass is completely and naturally submerged and actually a whole bunch of different liquids. Maybe we'll call this liquid one that has a certain specific weight. It has another liquid, maybe some more liquids. Um, and there's, I guess, one, two, three, four, five different liquids. We'll just, you know, each one has its own specific weight. Oh, not three, three, this should be three, four. And this body of mass is completely submerged within these different surfaces. And there's a force that's created by all these uh, liquids or fluids that's keeping this rock um, maybe afloat or there's, there's some kind of a force here. But before we talk about that, let's talk about the body of mass. We said it's a clump of something, so it's not perfectly a sphere. But it, it has rigid edges, it has concavities, it has lumps, bumps, all around its three-dimensional surface. Now, that's something very, very ugly because in the past couple of videos, we've been talking about pressure distributions on surfaces. Uh, we can solve those for flat, clean, you know, perfect surfaces, surfaces, but to find out a pressure distribution that's acting you know, on this weird three-dimensional clump of mass. It's very ugly. It's very ugly and it's very, very hard to analyze. So instead of using the pressure distribution method, we can use um, buoyancy to figure out, you know, if the question was asking, oh, what's the tension in the cable T? We can use the weight and the buoyant forces of this body of mass to figure that out. Now, let me let me give let's go over a definition. I have an easy definition and I have a hard definition. Now, the difficult definition is here in the red, and obviously the easy one is here in the right. So let's go over this. The resultant of the surface pressure distribution on a three-dimensional body, which is completely and naturally submerged and surrounded by static fluid or fluids, in which rho, the mass density, is equal to rho of z, and p, which is position, is equal to p of z, where z is up, so all of this depends on um, depth and the mass of the body and even the fluids, is a vertical upward force equal to the total weight of the fluids displaced by the body. What? That was confusing. Let's look at the easy definition. Resultant the resultant force, or the buoyant force, is equal to the weight of the fluids displaced. That's easy. The weight of the fluids, or fluid, displaced. 
what that is saying, well, let's look at a quick little example. Say we had a cube. Say we had a three-dimensional cube, and this cube, you know, is solid, and it had a volume of a hundred foot cubed. It was a hundred feet cubed um, of volume. And we put this co cube completely underwater, and you know water has a specific weight of, in this case, 62.4 pound per foot cubed. We said that the buoyant force, actually if we, if we drew a free body diagram, we would have the weight of the block, and then we'd have a buoyant force pushing that block up. Now, if we looked at the definition again, resulting the buoyant force is equal to the weight of the fluids displaced. So if we took a hundred foot cubed block or cube and we put it completely underwater, how much water is being displaced? Remember because the water was just in equilibrium before we put the block in and then when we put the block in, water, maybe the water level rose a little bit if it was, you know, in a giant pool. And that rise in water level, or that rise in elevation is dependent on how much volume of water got displaced. And if we said this was completely submerged, we know that the volume of water being displaced is equal to the volume of the cube, right? So the volume of water is a hundred feet cubed. And we said that the buoyant force is equal to the weight of the fluids displaced. So we know that the amount of volume of water being displaced is a hundred feet cubed. And in order to find the speci or the weight of that fluid, weight of 100 feet cubed of water, we multiply the volume by specific weight of that fluid. In this case, it's water. So we'd say that the buoyant force is equal to the volume of water or fluid or fluids displaced times the specific weight of those fluid or fluids. In this case, it would be volume times specific weight of water so 100 times 62.4, we find out the buoyant force is uh, 62.4 times 100 would be, what, two decimal places? So 62 or 6,240 pounds. That's, that's the buoyant force here, acting on this block of volume is equal to 100 feet cubed. So those are the definitions. And if we were to draw, if we come back here and we say, okay, well, we know the definition. Um, oops, let me actually, let me draw this in. This is the outline of that three-dimensional solid. And I'll say that, well, the weight of the fluids being displaced, in this case, we have multiple fluids in where in the last example, we only had one block and one water scenario, right? Here we have fluid number one, fluid number two, fluid number three, fluid number four, fluid number five. Now fluid number four, one has a certain amount of fluid being displaced, right, which is that much, this much right here, right? And again, fluid two has some liquid being displaced, which is, you know, that much. And fluid three has about that much being displaced. And fluid four has, you know, the rest or that much, right? And remember, this is the outline of the shape, but it's the it's the free body diagram of the fluids. So, in this case, since we have more than one fluids, we need we need to know the volume of this portion of that block, of this portion of the block, of this portion of the block, and of this tiny little piece here. And we multiply each of those volumes being displaced by the specific weight of each of those fluids being displaced. And we add those together, and that's our total buoyant force acting on that body, right? So force buoyant would be equal to, let's say, V1, gamma 1, plus V2, gamma 2, plus V3, gamma 3, and so on and so forth, right? The volume, or the buoyant force is the weight of the fluids being displaced. So the volume times the specific weight. 
volume times specific weight, volume times specific weight, volume times specific weight. You add them all together, the total should be a force or a weight of all those fluids and that weight is equal to the buoyant force and that buoyant force is acting up against that body. So that's kind of an introduction to buoyancy and um, hopefully this will click in a little bit more in some of the examples.